بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الدعاء السلاح المؤمن دعاء is a weapon for a believer this weapon needs to be utilized properly how it should be if a person learns the art of a small weapon he could do big damage and a person doesn't know how to operate a big weapon in inverted commas he won't able to do anything so dua is such that it will make a person who outwardly externally displays weakness you can take on the biggest the fastest the strongest the most equipped the most well versed why because the da'i the person making dua is allah so a person can have everything but he doesn't have Allah, he has nothing. You don't have anything but you got Allah, you got everything. But وَعِدُوا لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Asbab wise we need to prepare what is our capacity. And the most powerful yaqini asbab is dua. So a person who cracks the formula and that is by spending time with the ulama haq, the mashayikh, spending our time in the company of those who have learned how to take from Allah. So there was a lamb grazing with a flock of sheep one day and the lamb found some sweet grass at the edge of the field. So he went further and further and eventually he came to a place where a wolf pounced on him. So the lamb pleaded, please don't eat me, my stomach is full of grass. If you wait a while, I will taste much better. So the wolf thought, said, good, very good idea, and waited. Then the lamb again said, seeing the wolf restless, I need to make some movements. So let me try to get my food digested faster. So the wolf agreed. Then the Lamb said that now it's close to digestion. If you ring the bell around my neck, that sound will cause me to become more anxious and I will digest my food faster. And when the food digests, I'll taste more delicious and then you can consume me. So the wolf took the bell, rang it as hard as he could. And the shepherd heard the bell ringing and sent the dogs to find the missing lamb. So the dogs frightened the wolf and the lamb got saved. So the gentle, the weak, the ill-equipped can overpower the fierce, the strong. When they know the right method, when we know how to take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we learn the etiquettes and the adab, someone who is a prince has special people from his inception, there are people around him training him to become amongst the elite. Why? Because one day he's going to be king. So his grooming is different. We are taking and asking the king of kings. So we need to make effort in that direction particularly. Say somebody knocked on his father's home in the middle of the night and he was begging said, oh father, let me in, let me in, please, I need to stay. So the father said, so late at night, you're troubling me, what's the problem? He said, I'm a wanted man, I need help, I'm a wanted man. So the father said, that's impossible, son, you weren't even a wanted child, you weren't even a wanted child. If we done those amal that warrants our dua being accepted, so continue with the adab number 10. We shouldn't be cursing when making dua. Allah nad'u ala anfusina. We shouldn't but dua curse ourselves, our children, all our possessions. But la tuwafiqu min Allah ta'ala sa'at naylin fiha. That is a certain moment in the day. Fa yastajib lakum. Your dua will be accepted. Fa inna al malaika. يُؤَمِّنُونَ عَلَى مَا تَقُولُونَ So make dua and ask for good things because the malaika make dua and say Ameen. Whatever dua you are making, 
they say Amin to your dua. Nabi alayhi salam heard somebody saying, Allah may nasluk as sabr. Allah grant me patience and sabr. So he told him, سألت الله البلاء فسله العافية How can you ask Allah for bala and calamities? By saying that you are impatient means difficulty should be inflicted and then you will be patient on those hardships. Ask Allah for afiyat. Likewise, we shouldn't ask for death. لا يتمنى ين أحدكم الموت لضر نزل به في الدنيا any difficulties, any hardships, any trials, turbulence that comes in your life, don't ask Allah to take you away. If you need to make the dua, then say, Allahumma ahini ma kanatil hayatu khayran li. Ya life, loving is good for me. Then keep me alive. Wa tawaffani idha kanatil wafatu khayran li. And if death is good for me, then ya Allah, take me away. Number 11, if we make dua, we should ask jami' dua, concise duas. So Aisha radiallahu anha, when Nabi alayhi salam was in a company, he said that you should make dua concisely. So she asked, Wa ma? Wa oh Nabi of Allah, what is this concise dua? Wa jawami'u. What is this concise dua? Said, Quli Allahumma inni asaluka min al khayri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alim tu min wa ma lam alam. وأعوذ بك من الشر كل عجل وأجل ما علمت منه وما لم أعلم. Like that is many other ideas that are مسنونة that are جامع. Number two, we should make dua silently when we are alone and in solitude. فإنكم لا تدعون أسم ولا غائبا. That we should have mercy on ourselves, not raise our voices, because we are not calling a being that's deaf or absent. إِنَّهُ مَعَكُمْ إِنَّهُ سَمِعٌ قَرِيبٌ Allah is with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to you. Then, like when you go to somebody's scene and you need to ask for something, you need to know when's the right time to ask. So what are the times when dua is accepted? Number one, in the nida, when the adhan is being given, a dua in the nida la turad is not refuted, is not rejected. So when the adhan is being given, then dua is accepted. Number two, in the qira'at al-fatiha, when you read surah al-fatiha, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converses with you, hadha bayni wa bayna abdi wa li abdi ma sa'al. Whatever you ask for, Allah is saying, I will grant you. اِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِمِ Ya Allah, my greatest need is hidayat. We should have ihsas and awareness that we are asking Allah and our dua will be accepted. قَالَ هَذَا لِعَبْدِ وَلِعَبْدِ مَا سَأَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers that this is the requirements my servant has and I will grant it to him. Number three, in the ta'meen. When we are saying Ameen in Salat and your Ameen إِذَا أَمَّنَ الْإِمَامْ فَأَمِّنُوهُ When the Imam says Ameen, we should say Ameen فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ وَافَقَ Whoever's Ameen conforms to the Ameen of the Malaika غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Then his sins will be forgiven. Number four, between ما بين الأذان والإقامة Between the Adhan and إقامة إن الدعاء لا يرد بين الأذان والإقامة فدعوه between the adhan and the إقامة the dua is not rejected so we should make dua and حلت له شفاعتي يوم القيامة and even after the adhan we should read the dua نبي عليه السلام intercession becomes necessary for that person إذا نادى المنادي and when the adhan is being given, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَا That the doors of the heavens open was to jiba dua. And whoever is making dua, the dua is accepted. So when the adhan is being given, dua is accepted in the iqamat al-salah. When iqamat is being given as well, سَعَتَانِ لَا تُرَدُّ عَلَى دَعِنْ دَعْوَتُهُ That a person who is making dua, his dua is not rejected. 
and one of them is when the iqamat take place number six in the sujood when a person is making sajda yakun abdu min rabbi wa sajid that aqrabu ma yakunu closest a person is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in sajda فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَى So increase in dua. Then number seven, بَيْنَ المغرب والعشاء Between Maghrib and Isha, duas are not rejected. So, Abla ibn Masood used to say, رضي الله عن نعم سعى What a great opportunity moment there is بَيْنَ المغرب والعشاء Between Maghrib and Isha because it's a moment of negligence where people are engaged and you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so dua is accepted number eight in the khatm al-Qur'an when the Qur'an is being completed then dua is accepted كان أنس إذا ختم القرآن جمع ولده وأهل بيته فدعا بهم it is Anas and Anas habit was that when they used to make khatam of the Qur'an he should gather his entire family and used to make dua اقرأوا القرآن وصلوا الله به that when you read Qur'an ask Allah through the Qur'an so that's an opportunity when the khatm Qur'an whether we make our personal khatm of Qur'an when we make a khatm of Qur'an in Taraweeh when there is a hifz khatm we should try to exceed in dua Imam Nawi used to say that Saha and Ba'd al Ta'abin al Kufin and Umkan used to be on a Siaman. That the Ta'abin's habit was that when they were going to make Khatam of Quran, they used to fast on that day to increase the Azbab of Kabuliyat. And he also says uh, in his Kitab Tibyan that Yustahabu, uh, it is Mustahab to be present in the Majlis, in the gathering. Of the Khatm Quran, istihbaban muakkadan, very emphasized. And there's a narration of Darmi uh, Ibn Abbas, that his routine was he would identify and place one person who would look for people who were reading Quran and making a Khatm. So this person here, when he found that place, Alama Ibn Abbas. He would inform Hazrat Ibn Abbas Allah, know that this place is making khatam of Qur'an and he used to be present. So he should seek places where the khatam of Qur'an was taking place. Mujahid says, كانوا يشتعون عند ختم القرآن Whenever there was a khatam of Qur'an, people used to gather and they should say, تنزل الرحمة That rahmat is going to be descending. In the way of Darmi, من قرأ القرآن ثم دعا أمنا على دعي أربة آلاف ملك Four thousand malaika say Amin when dua is made after the recitation of Quran. Number nine, at the end of a gathering where we make collective dua and people say Amin. Number ten, when the heart is soft, a person goes to that moment. إذا رقى أحدكم فليدع when your heart becomes soft and you feel close to Allah and you in tears. And you feel that kafir in condition, اختنموا الدعاء إن take the opportunity when your hearts are soft, فإنها رحمة because this is an opportunity where the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is descending. So make dua when your hearts are soft. Number eleven, when it is when the rain falls, thintan two occasions dua are not rejected. وتحت المطر one of them is when it rains number two on the day of جمعة في الجمعة الساعة لا يوافقها عبد مسلم قائم يصلي there's one moment on the day of جمعة that a person asks Allah إلا أعطاه Allah سبحانه وتعالى will accept his dua on that moment so here ma bayna ages imam some mentions is between the two khutbas some mentions is uh so the ulama the muhaqqiqin mentioned after asr that's another qawl so ibn qayyim says that uh, 
His opinion is أن الساعة في يوم الجمعة هي بعد الأسر That is after أسر So he says even though after Asr is a definite time which your dua will be accepted, so there is another moment which possibility is that the dua is also accepted in the rest of the day of Juma. So we've got two moments. If worst case we cannot be making dua the entire day of Juma, at least those specific occasions which ulama have mentioned, at least worst case between Asr and Maghrib on the day of Juma. We should try to engage in du'a. Number 13, at the end of every salah after tashahud, qabla salam, that uh, before we make salam after reading tashahud, du'as are accepted. After salah, so after a person reads his first salat, then uh, du'as are accepted. Ya Rasulullah, ayyu du'a asma, which du'a is mostly heard by Allah. He replied, Jawful Layl in, in the darkness and the latter part of the night, and Dubur Salawat al Matubat, and after the first Salat, idea making dua is accepted. Number 15, Sa'a min kulli layla. That is a moment every night. Inna fi layli la sa'atan la yuafiqha rajlum muslimun. If you conform to that moment, yes, Allah khayram min amri dunya wal akhira, illa atau iya. Allah will grant him his need and that's every night. Then when waking up at night, so a person goes to sleep and then he becomes restless and in the darkness of the night he gets up and he says La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu Allahumma khfirli O da'a or he makes dua he says Allah forgive me then his dua will be accepted. So the darkness of the night is separate from the night itself when a person wakes up. So he could make muafik of those two moments. Then when the cock crows, فَإِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ سِيَاحَ الدِّيكَ When you hear the cock crowing, فَاسَلَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill your needs. Then number 19, بَعْدَ زَوَالِ الشَّمْسِ قَبْلَ الظَّهْرِ after the sun is at its zenith, zawal, before dhahar, innaha sa'a tuftahu fiha abwabu sama, where the doors of the heavens open up. So that's the time to make dua. Then the time uh, on Laylatul Qadr, we know where duas are accepted, where Allah subhanahu wa comes down to the first heaven. We know the month of Ramadan, ila dakhada Ramadan, futiyat abwabu al jannah. Then the days of, of Hajj, especially the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. That uh, the, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are more Mubarak, and the 10th is very Mubarak. Then number 22, drinking Zamzam. Al Ma'u Zamzam, Nima Shuribala. Number 23, when a person goes for Hajj Umrah, Al Ghazi fi Sabilillah, Wal Hajj, Wal Mu'atamir, Waftullahi. So these are the wafts, the wufud, the contingencies of Allah, and their duas are accepted. And at the time of iftar, da'watu sa'im in the fitrihi, when you make iftar, duas are access, uh, easily accepted. Da'watu dhakir, a person who is making dhikr, and excessively engage in zikr, his dua is also accepted. So these are all opportunities, the times when dua can be readily accepted. May Allah give us tawfiq to spend our time properly. The amal for today is, when Nabi Islam told us, Abu Dhar, ala adulluka, ala khaslatayni huma khafifatan. It's very light, very easy, it's a walk over. Wathqalu fil mizan, very heavy on the scales. Alayka bi husnil khuluqi, Good character, number one. And number two, team and silence for the nafsi biyadihi. There's no amal more greater that a person can practice on than these two that will be weighty on the scales on the day of Qiyamah.